Welcome back. Chinese President Xi Jinping, pardon me, says China is, quote, willing to be a partner and a friend to the United States ahead of next month's presidential election. Xi Jinping also making a rare trip to China's Fujian province that faces Taiwan. Uh, this is the province facing Taiwan. He went there earlier this week. The visit comes after major Chinese military exercising, uh, which uh, had uh, jets encircling Taiwan on Monday. The Wall Street Journal is also reporting this morning that China is, quote, employing what Taiwan says is an expanding army of hackers, diplomats, prosecutors, and celebrities in its effort to persuade Taiwan to submit to Beijing. Joining me now is Gatestone Institute senior fellow and the author of Plan Red, China's Project to Destroy America. Gordon Chang back with us. Gordon, great to see you. Thanks for being here. What do you make of the exercises around Taiwan and where this is going? Yeah, this is going to war. Um, people in Taiwan and officials say that China probably will establish a quarantine around the main island of Taiwan sometime within the next six months. Now, a quarantine is not an act of war, but a blockade is, and China could very well move from a quarantine to a blockade, especially if the quarantine doesn't work, which means that we would have a conflict in East Asia. And when you look at the other conflicts around the world, Ukraine, North Africa, Middle East, then this starts to look like a global conflict. And I think the reason why this is happening now is because Xi Jinping's economy is failing. We see this from all sorts of indicators. And I believe that a desperate dictator is going to do desperate things. So we've got to be extremely concerned because our political system is talking peace while Xi Jinping is actually, when he speaks to the Chinese people, he's talking war all the time. Well, I mean, just looking at the hacking, I mean, the Cybersecurity Association of China is calling for a review of Intel's products. They claim that these products show security vulnerabilities, high failure rates, and that they pose a national security threat. A spokesperson at Intel says that the company always prioritizes product safety and quality and that it will work with Chinese officials to clarify any questions. But the Cyberspace Administration of China banned domestic infrastructure operators from buying products made by another U.S. chipmaker, Micron. Last year, that's after China's cybersecurity review of the company's products, alleged that they identified significant security risks. Gordon, are they, are they trying to say American uh, semiconductor companies are doing what actually China is doing, trying to surveil America? Well, yes. And, and what they're doing is Xi Jinping is trying to push out foreign companies because he doesn't want competitors there to challenge his state industries. So, you know, if, if Biden would get off the beach, I think what he should do is just ban all American chip makers from doing business in or with China because he's going to Xi Jinping's going to push them out anyway. So we should just get this over with. And we should understand that Xi Jinping has declared an economic war on us. He did that a long time ago. We need to respond, and we need to respond with the vigor that he has shown in attacking our companies. Yeah, it's a great point, because I remember when this administration came out with all these new rules saying that, you know, uh, outside American companies were not to sell chips to Chinese companies. What they missed was that there's so much Chinese equipment already embedded in American companies and in American products. So it, if you're really going to ban anything, you need to rip some of these uh, Huawei products out of the equipment that's already there. Isn't that right? Oh, certainly. Um, we got to complete the job of ripping Huawei out of our rural networks. But more important, we need to start looking at those cranes that you have been talking about before and other things where China can actually sabotage port operations. Um, you know, we got all these surveillance cameras, Chinese drones, you name it. They are surveilling our country. They know more about us than we do because they have been doing this for quite some time. We know what's going on. We don't do anything about it. I think our political system has failed. And the American people, of course, they should be angry at China for doing this. But really, we should be angrier at our own leaders. We got November 5 coming up. We need to do something about this, Maria. And you've been leading the charge. Thank you so much, Gordon. Look, there are maps that show multiple incursions of, quote, mystery drones near the U.S. military sites. I'm going to ask Mike Pompeo about this coming up. The former Secretary of State is my special guest coming up in the program. And he's the one who coined the phrase, China is inside the gates. But do you think those mysterious drones that are flying, the U.S. doesn't seem to know whose drones they are? Do you believe they're Chinese? 
Yes, of course. Yeah. Because first of all, hobbyists can't mount the operations that we saw at, for instance, the Langley base in Virginia. This has to be a foreign power. Yeah. And the foreign power that produces drones is not Russia, it's not Iran, it's not North Korea, it's China. So we know what the Chinese have been doing. Yeah. We have been seeing these Chinese intrusions on our military bases, and now they're taking to the air and doing it. And we have a law that says, you know, the military can't shoot them down unless there's an imminent threat. This is ridiculous. We should be shooting these drones down because they're surveilling our military facilities. It's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely incredible. Unidentified drones swarming over a U.S. military base for two weeks, more than two weeks, and nobody knows why. Gordon, let me get your take uh, on all this stimulus coming out of China. China's Minister of Housing and Urban Rural Development announcing in a press conference today that Beijing now will expand the amount, the amount of financing available for housing projects on a so-called white list to $562 billion in a bid to help reverse China's ongoing property slump. China unveiled a white list of construction projects at the beginning of the year and allowed banks to provide them with loans to help get them finished. But investors did not see the move as enough. Chinese property stocks tanked on the news. The Shanghai Composite also closing in the red overnight, Gordon. So this stimulus uh, has come up short, even though initially when the CCP announced it, hedge fund managers loaded up on these Chinese stocks. Incredibly. Your reaction? Yeah, the CSI 300 real estate index fell almost 8% today, and the overall CSI 300 fell 1.3%. You know, the point here is the developers, they need to complete these projects because they've already sold these apartments. But they're adding, when you think about it and step back, they're actually adding to China's real estate glut. Last September, a, a former senior statistics official said that China had enough vacant apartments for 1.3 billion people. But at the same time, he also acknowledged that others thought that China had enough vacant apartments for, th for 3 billion people. So really what we're doing here is China has no solution to this because the law of supply and demand applies even in communist economies. And that means a crash is coming, which is going to take down the rest of the Chinese economy, which is the reason why Xi Jinping, I believe, is desperate, which is the reason why he's going after Taiwan hard right now, as well as Japan, Philippines, and India. And, and the impact on America, Gordon? Well, uh, the Philippines is a treaty ally of the United States, so is Japan. And uh, although Biden keeps on issuing these warnings that we are willing to use force against China, he's issued three oral warnings yeah. to that effect. The Biden State Department has issued 12 warnings to that effect. Yeah. The Chinese just blow past them because they don't believe us anymore. Right. Hollow they, warnings lead to wars. Well, we keep sending more ministers there to kiss the ring of Xi Jinping and nothing gets done. Gordon, it's great to get your insights as always. Thank you so much. Gordon Chang joining us Thank this you, morning Maria. on Communist China. Stay with us. We'll be right back.